You always leave your homework to the last moment. You only study the night before. Having fun is more important than getting any work done. You need some self-discipline. Assalamu alaikum. Hey everyone, I'm Ramesa. Welcome to my channel. How do you define self-discipline? Google's dictionary says it means the ability to control one's feelings and overcome one's weaknesses. Is that you? Maybe and maybe not. I used to go by the rule that I'd work better with less time. Basically, I kind of procrastinated on purpose. I'd leave my homework or revisions when I had almost no time left so that I'd feel more inclined to finish the work, especially with homework, as then if I didn't do it, I'd get attention, and obviously I didn't want that. Having self-discipline is really important because it helps to stop bad habits and avoid procrastination. Most of the time, anyway. When you have this discipline, you're able to continue your tasks despite any challenges you face rather than quitting halfway. You're able to get things done and make progress in your work or your studies. A lack of discipline can cause a lot of problems, clutter, stress and overwhelm. In extreme cases, maybe even health issues. Self-discipline is so hard because we run away from difficult things. We'd rather do the things that are easy, that we're used to. We end up getting distracted and losing direction. This is really important for students because we need to stay focused, make the right decisions and build good habits. On a personal level, I'm going to be honest. I still struggle a little bit to not procrastinate, but I'm doing better than I was a year ago, two years ago, staying focused and motivated. Sometimes it's really hard to stay on track. So in this video, I'd like to deep dive into developing self-discipline. Note that I said developing. You can't instantly become perfect and immediately get all your work done faster every week. It's a continuous journey. We should never stop growing. I'm just going to discuss different things you can do that can help you to begin to create that self-control. First, make sure you've liked this video and subscribed to my channel. I'm going to start by talking about setting clear goals. If you're a returning viewer to my channel, you'll know I talk about goals quite a lot. Well, why wouldn't I when they're actually quite effective and are a fantastic way to keep motivation in most cases? What do I mean by a clear goal? A clear goal is specific, measurable, achievable, realistic and time-bound. It's a particular target or objective There's a way for you to see if you're making progress. It's something you can actually do within an exact time frame. Something you're capable of doing that relates to your values and whatever you stand for. Setting goals give that sense of direction that you need. It will show you what your aspirations or your dreams are, what you want to get in the end. Keep your goals flexible. Sometimes unexpected things happen and stuff doesn't go as planned. You need to be able to change your goal to work in any situation. Along with this, a visual representation can be really helpful. You can make a vision board or a mood board. It would include where you want to be when you manage to achieve your goal. Has the small things that will make you feel like you're making progress. Or if you don't want to do anything too fancy, you can always just write a list where you check off the boxes as you go. If you're dreaming of something big, break down your goal into small chunks so you're easily able to tell that you're moving along. And thinking about your goal being measurable, celebrate those milestones. Maybe a little treat at appropriate intervals. Recognising your progress can reinforce positive habits. Always remember it's a good idea to document your progress, maybe through a planner or a notebook, or even something digital. This can help you to review regularly and reinforces the point I made about flexibility. Next, I'm going to discuss planning, as in routines and schedules. I know, it's fun to live life without following many rules, just going with the flow, doing whatever comes in the moment. Maybe you're that sort of person. Far as I know, I certainly am not. But when you try to be disciplined, you need to be able to create a routine that you can easily follow, dedicate time to studying, attend any extra tuition or classes regularly, complete your assignments, which I'll talk a bit more about later. Consistency is key in developing discipline. Learn to set priorities. Give certain activities high importance over others. If you like to, you can time block where your day is split into different periods of time and you do a specific task in each block. Remember that when you plan out activities, including some buffer time can be useful for any delays or interruptions you don't expect, and any unforeseen events, so you don't allow them to derail your entire day. Limit your distractions, close YouTube, put your phone away, clear your desk. For some people, it's so easy to get lost in something and time goes away, just like that. Practice time management techniques that have worked for you. If you've never tried any before, now is the time to give it a go. One of my personal favourites is the Pomodoro Technique. I use it quite a lot and I think it's really effective. While you're planning, making your schedules and routines, build in breaks. You have to remember to rest and recharge. Breaks will prevent burnout, improve your focus and enhance your overall performance. As always, be flexible and be able to review and readjust if necessary. I'm now going to talk about organisation. 
Prioritizing really relates to this. A fantastic way to stay organized can be through the Eisenhower Matrix. Actually, I haven't tried it yet myself, but based on what I've seen, it seems to be a really good method to use. But one thing I have tried myself is using a planner. It's such a great way to see the assignments you have to do. And you can also include other reminders for yourself. Doesn't need to be anything fancy, just anything easily accessible and that you enjoy using. Many of my classmates at school use Google Keep and other people like Notion. I know that's really popular. Make use of lists if you enjoy using them. You just need to know what vibes with you, I guess. Designate specific places where you study or work. Keep these environments clean and free of mess and clutter. It was only two months ago I got my desk to look like this. And since I've upgraded my so-called organised mess into what you just saw, I've been working and studying so much better than before. So the environment really does matter and can affect your productivity levels. When I talked about planners earlier, I mentioned how I also keep track of my reminders. If you're someone who forgets things a lot, you can set reminders on your phone. Every device normally has that. You can also set those reminders on a calendar as well. It's really up to you. Being organised also means planning ahead. I know you can't predict the future. When I say this, I mean anticipate upcoming assignments, tests or projects, and plan your workload accordingly. Avoid cramming or getting things done at the very last minute. Kind of relating to this is creating effective study habits. Like I said previously, consistency is key. It helps to build momentum, stay focused, and build good habits. I'm going to mention a few things you can try that can help to become better at studying. However, if you'd like even more on this topic of improving your study skills, check out my video. It's linked in the description. I love using Quizlet for active recall. Even if you don't have it, you can always use any of the flashcards app or physical cards if you've made any. With flashcards, spaced repetition is also helpful. This is where your study sessions are spaced out over time to reinforce your learning and improve your memory retention. Flashcard apps usually do this by default. If you have a planner or calendar, you can make notes of the days you want to revisit topics to space the repetition. I did talk about your environment earlier, but an interesting thing I've read about is experimenting with the places you study in to see where's best. My favourite place, aside my desk, is actually my kitchen. When nothing's cooking and it's not mealtime, obviously. Teaching the material is also a really great thing to do. I've done it myself. A few months ago, my friend needed some help understanding German word order, since we were going to have a test. By explaining it to her and supporting her in learning, it improved my own knowledge. You see, real life evidence that teaching what you've learnt to others helps you too. We both did quite well on that test, to be honest. For my subjects, our uh, assessments are often essay-based or include big mark questions. I sometimes create cheat sheets, even if I'm not actually going to take it to the test. You condense any necessary information to just one page with a standard font. You can also use images and colour coding, but I personally keep mine very simple. So, by making a cheat sheet, you've done some retrieval practice and active recall all in one. I feel like those both mean the same thing. Number five, self-control and boundaries. Having discipline includes being able to control yourself, so things like your reactions, bouncing back, all that. Learn to be aware of your thoughts, emotions and impulses to regulate your behaviour if you know you don't do this very well already. Find the difference between when it's time to work and when it's time to play. I don't mean play play, I mean like lounging around I guess. Delayed gratification is when you resist immediate temptations to focus on whatever you've got to do. Essentially, if you get the work done, you can reward yourself after. It doesn't have to be anything major, it could be getting some time to go on your phone after finishing all your homework or watching Netflix after f you finish your art project. You could even buy yourself a gift if that's what you feel like doing. Just don't empty your wallet in the process. Be able to identify your priorities, what is really important right now. Allocate your time and energy accordingly. Learn to say no sometimes, even if you absolutely want to go to the park tomorrow, but you haven't finished your textiles project and it's also due tomorrow. Be able to tell your friends you can't come. Surely there are other days. And this is also general advice, but being assertive is an essential skill to possess. Clearly express your likes and dislikes, needs and limits to other people in a respectful way. Don't just accept things as they are. Be able to stand up for yourself. Something people struggle with is setting boundaries of technology. You don't need to completely put your phone away. Maybe you could switch it off or block apps. My phone, which is a Samsung, has modes and routines that let me change settings when a certain mode is switched on, or during a particular time period. When you take breaks, Avoid using a screen, have an actual break, move around, have a drink, read a book, anything that's away from your workspace. Finally, I'd like to talk about staying motivated and maintaining persistence. As you make progress, acknowledge and celebrate your small achievements. Notice the things you're managing to do and obstacles you're managing to overcome. This will help to build momentum. Focus on making progress rather than being perfect. 
I mentioned this earlier with mood boards and vision boards, but visualizing your success can make you feel more motivated. It can increase your confidence and support you in believing you'll achieve. Break down big tasks into smaller steps. I do this all the time and I feel like I make more progress when I get to tick more boxes. Just visualize and break down the task in realistic ways. Seek inspiration from quotes, success stories and role models. Surround yourself with people who support you like your friends and family. Maintain a growth mindset, the mindset that you can do it and that you'll succeed. See challenges as a chance to grow, not a setback. Learning from these hurdles is important because it holds clues to what went wrong and what you could try doing differently next time. Bouncing back will help to develop resilience. Stay organised and find your purpose. Why are you trying to do what you're trying to do? Once you know this, be committed. Remind yourself of your long-term goals. Learn to manage stress effectively by doing things you enjoy and taking breaks. Okay everyone, that's everything for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video and will be able to find a new sense of direction and develop discipline. The most important thing is to start. You don't have to just decide one day that you want to have more self-discipline. It is a continuous journey and now is a great time to begin. Thanks so much for checking out today's video. Comment below the subject you're currently trying to get better at. Like and share and most importantly, subscribe to never miss an update. In the meantime, be resilient and chase for your dreams. Bye for now.